Hi, my name is Rebecca Dell. I'm the program director for the industry program at the Climate Works Foundation. This is the largest steel mill in North America, in East Chicago, Indiana, on the shores of Lake Michigan. It can produce 50 pounds of steel per year for every person in the United States. That probably sounds like a lot, but actually, around the world, we produce more than 10 times that per person. And we use it to make everything. Because steel is great. It's strong, it's stiff, it's formable, it's durable. It has a variety of useful both thermal and electrical properties. It's widely available and it's cheap. We're gonna come back to that last point. But unfortunately, every year, this mill is also producing 2 billion pounds of CO2, the gas most responsible for our climate crisis. They're actually making about twice as much CO2 as steel, just like every other traditional steel mill in the world. And that's why this chart looks the way it does. These are all the climate changing emissions from the last 30 years, split out into major sectors. The bright wedges at the top are direct emissions from industry. The paler wedge underneath is emissions from generating all the electricity that's used by industry. Between the two, the industrial sector is responsible for 38%, or comfortably more than a third, of all global emissions. And notice how the slope at the top of the green wedge is considerably steeper than the slope at the bottom of it. That's because industrial emissions are rising at twice the rate of overall climate changing emissions. So this is an enormous problem getting worse very quickly. But what are we actually talking about when we talk about industry? We're definitely talking about steel mills, but it turns out that from a climate perspective, we're talking about surprisingly not much else. After steel, the biggest emitters are cement and chemicals, mostly fertilizer and plastics. Those three generate two thirds of direct CO2 emissions from industry. Aluminum and paper are a distant fourth and fifth. Everything else, mining, construction, manufacturing, food processing, waste processing, all together generate only a quarter of industrial emissions. So mostly what we're talking about when we talk about industry and climate is metal, building materials, paper, fertilizer, and plastics, the basic materials of our lives and our economy. So you're probably thinking, whew, I don't work in the steel industry, so I'm off the hook. Unfortunately not. These emissions are hiding in your supply chains. If you sell cars, their steel is a major source of emissions. If you work in the construction industry, you're buying cement and concrete. And these supply chain emissions, sometimes called scope three emissions, can be remarkably large. A few years back, Apple did a comprehensive accounting of all the greenhouse gases emitted to make their products. This included the direct emissions from their own facilities, the emissions from generating electricity for their offices and data centers, from the airplanes and trucks that move their products, from the factories that manufacture their products and components, all the way to the raw materials. What they found was that the single largest source, the biggest line item in their emissions budget, was from making the aluminum for the housings of their computers and tablets. In fact, just making the aluminum was responsible for more than a quarter of all the emissions everywhere in their supply chain. After all, while making steel might emit two tons of CO2 for every ton of steel, making aluminum can emit more than 20 tons of CO2 for every ton of aluminum. Once they knew this, they could take action. They started refining the design of their products to make them easier to recycle. They preferentially purchased aluminum from suppliers that used clean energy and so had lower emissions. They invested in a research joint venture to develop a new and innovative process to make aluminum without all the greenhouse gas emissions. They became a driver of change in the aluminum industry. None of this would have been possible if they hadn't first done the work 
of finding the emissions in their supply chains. So this is where you come in. You need to do the same thing. Find all the major sources of emissions that your firm and your business activities are responsible for so you can make a plan to reduce and then eliminate them. What you find will depend on what you do, but for many businesses, you should expect that, like Apple, making the basic materials that go into your products will be a big portion of what you find. Once you know what you're dealing with, you have a lot of options. First, maybe you can just use less of whatever materials you're currently using. While we all know the importance of energy efficiency, most businesses haven't put much thought into material efficiency. The bad news is, that means you're probably wasting materials. The good news is, that means there are probably some easy opportunities to reduce your material use without having to try too hard. Making products last longer, either by making them more durable or making them easier to repair or upgrade, is a great way to improve material efficiency. Next, maybe you can substitute a material with lower greenhouse gas emissions. This could be a recycled version of the original material or something completely different. For example, maybe you could use engineered wood instead of steel in a building. Finally, maybe the most important thing you can do is to work with your vendors and suppliers to help them reduce their emissions. This can start with practical information sharing but it shouldn't stop there. You're going to have to work with them to unlock the innovative solutions that will get us to net zero. Now, you may be thinking, wait a minute, why is this my problem? The companies making these materials should be responsible for figuring out how to do it without all the emissions. But the simple truth is, they can't do it without you. If no one wants to buy climate safe materials, no one is gonna make them and you can afford it. Remember what I said about steel being cheap? That's true of all these materials. When Apple discovered that aluminum was the biggest driver of their climate impact, they were spending less than $1 per laptop on it. The additional cost of green materials is a rounding error on the cost of most finished products, even if there are steep transition costs for the materials industries themselves. The industries that drive climate damage need partnership from their customers and supply chains if they are going to make the switch. That partnership means sharing information, sharing risk, developing solutions together, committing in advance to purchasing clean materials, and advocating together for public policies that will make our low carbon transition possible. And all of that is only fair. Because while not many of us buy raw steel or trucks full of ethylene, we all benefit from products made out of them, and we all need a way to make them without baking the climate. So ask yourself, what's hiding in your supply chain 